So, you have the flashy car, the nice house, and the bank balances never look better. Everyone thinks that you've arrived, but have you really? Meet Tabang Squambani, one-time investment banker, today a committed social activist. Tabang is one of the founding members of Kayelo, a health and wellness company specializing in HIV AIDS awareness, education and treatment. He has also established the Lonely Road Foundation, an initiative set up to support orphaned and vulnerable children in rural South Africa. So what made this high flyer bow out of the proverbial rat race and trade in his stocks and bonds for a life dedicated to caring and sharing? I think I can sum up the, the, the two worlds in, from my perspective as that I'd be perfectly willing to die tomorrow with the knowledge that I have made a difference in, in people's lives um, and that what I will take with me is not necessarily material. Tabang is the first to admit that he has had a sheltered life of privilege. The youngest child in his family, he found in his parents a great source of inspiration. He says that they placed discipline, education and good moral values above all else. I, I grew up privileged um, and, I, and I say that because I grew up with parents who all they did in their lives and all they've wanted to do was give their children the best opportunities in life. And, um, I see that as privilege. It wasn't privilege in the sense of being, you know, bought cars at 18 or anything like that. You know, um, our entire family have, have achieved academic results through scholarships and bursaries and, and etc. As a result, Tabang got the opportunity to attend one of the top schools in the country. It was here that his deep love for sport first began and developed into a passion that was to play an important role in his adult life. A bright all-rounder, he went on to graduate from UCT with a BCom degree and to start up his own web development and software company. In his own words, he was young, uber successful and arrogant. Tabang's success did not last long. Fueled by the dot-com crash, his business soon failed spectacularly. It was a really tough time for him because um, you know, we were all progressing in our careers and um, he was trying things which were maybe a bit riskier than we were doing and they didn't come off and it, he took it very personally because there were personal failures uh, to some extent um, and he also needed to uh, both financially recover from it and also um, personally to, to recover from it and make sure that it's something that he learned from and he was able to grow from there. It all depends on which position you, you, you're in, but bankruptcy, it beats down your pride. It, it, it really does. It, it's humiliating. Um, I, had, I hadn't lived with my parents for, for so long and I was fortunate enough to be able to go back and say to my parents, I'm bankrupt, like, can I live with you? Tabang described the event as a life MBA. For the first time, he had to confront failure, and this was made worse by the guilt that he felt as his staff all lost their jobs. What was once his dream lay shattered. Burnt out and all alone, he wondered how to pick up the pieces. But he eventually did. Soon Tabang was a rising corporate success once again. Money poured in and he made the best of the good life. Increasingly, he became seduced by a consumerist life. He shopped at the best malls, wore swish designer labels, and his past financial hardships seemed like just another bad dream. I also got caught up in, in the rat race that, you know, the financial game, you know, you, you earn good money, you buy nice things and you live a fairly comfortable life and that comfortable life is you know it, it actually encapsulates you and, and, and almost imprisons you in a certain sense you get caught up in it and then you can't escape. It's said that contentment is the only real wealth. Perhaps we all know this at a deeper level but why is it that we're so enamored by things? What is it that drives us to consume 
and doesn't really make us any more fulfilled. Tabang Squambani's winning streak was short-lived. Unbeknown to him, an even larger crisis loomed. There's a Chinese proverb that says that only a fool falls into a ditch twice. And, um, well, <laughs> officially I became a fool. After a brief but heady run of success, Tabang experienced his second bankruptcy with the dissolution of yet another bold venture. It's said that failure often provides the stepping stone to success and contains within it valuable life lessons. For Tabung, a steady realization was dawning. Money is not a dependable resource. I used the next few years after the second bankruptcy to really just understand more about society, people, what's going on in the world and, and, and business, and then also about who I am as a person. Tabang feels grateful for all that life has given him and firmly believes that privilege should always be accompanied by obligations and a sense of responsibility for those less fortunate. He feels particularly saddened by the plight of young children in our country, many of whom don't know where their next meal will come from. A visit to a rural village in Limpopo made him aware of just how fast these children have to grow up in order to survive the harsh conditions that life has dealt them. While we were sitting there, I heard a scraping noise on the door. And, um, you know, I, I got up and, and opened the door. And there was this little 20-month-old baby girl. And, um, you know, I, I looked at the carers, the caregivers, and, and, and I asked them, you know, well, why can't you open the door? This, you know, this little baby, I just opened the door for it. And they, you know, they told me that she needs to learn how to become independent. And uh, I, I was, it, it, it just completely hit me. Um, it hit me so hard, I couldn't believe that I lived in a country where 20 month old babies are required to be independent. I, I said, that's it, uh, the buck stops here. And it was a decision I made to try and do something about it. Tabang was racked by deep sorrow and tried desperately to make sense of his feelings. While out on a breezy morning ride, he was inspired to start up the Lonely Road Foundation. In order to raise funds and awareness for desolate and despairing children, he resolved to cycle through six African countries and then to summit Mount Kilimanjaro. For Tabang, this physically grueling journey is seen as a symbolic parallel to the lonely road traveled on a daily basis by these children. I have a strong belief in life that you, you, you can never know anything about a person until you've walked a mile in their shoes. So I basically just made the decision that I wanted to walk a mile in, in, in the lives of an orphan, a vulnerable child. And one day decided that getting on a bike alone and unsupported would be the way to find myself in that situation and then experience it um, physically. The trip was probably the, the biggest um, point of, of change for me in, in, in the way I reflected on things. I, um, I thought I knew myself, but when you're alone with yourself, truly, truly alone with yourself and experiencing solitude, you have to either like yourself or be very unhappy.